God's blessings from beautiful St. Anne's Church, built in 1872 and holding that wonderful relic that has cured so many souls in this area for the last 150 years. We were honored that the bishop was able to come and celebrate our 150th anniversary in December to remind us that what this faith, what this relic, what these people have done in God's name has been absolutely spectacular. Normally, we would try to celebrate the Mass inside the church, but because of the sound problem that we have at St. Anne's, it is difficult to do so. We did get the sound equipment upgraded here at the parish. It ran us a good amount and uh, put an outdoor system in, ran us about $8,500, but we had a lot of nice benefactors and people of faith who helped us out. To finish the outside project, we would need another $2,500. If we wanted to celebrate masses inside the church, a video camera would cost us about $11,000. And so, in lieu of that, we celebrate mass this way for you because you're that important to us. Let us place ourselves as we begin this holiest week of the year in our Lord's loving presence as we ask our Lord to be with us during this very Holy Week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and the disciples draw near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. If anyone should say anything to you, reply, the master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowd preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? The crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brethren, like the crowds who accompanied Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him, if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me, a pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet, I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten 
to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to all my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not deem equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend, and those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me, if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you. One of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not our Lord, he said in reply. He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, 
From now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, Mine will never be, Jesus said it to him. Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said it to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He had advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately they went out over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword and drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, 
For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple, area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maidens came over to him and said, you two were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you two are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear. I do not <clears throat> know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him and led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, 
I have sinned in betraying innocent love. They said, What is this to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After a consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why the field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called the Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus called the Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside of the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him, and took the reed, and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross.
And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sakbaktani, which means, My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Son of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earthquake, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from the tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped him in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance of the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this impostor, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. 
Give orders, then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him away, and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last impostor would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The God is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. Celebrating a mass that was staffed by Viatorian priests for the last 150 years. I very much uh, am indebted to the wonderful spirit that those in this community have offered me personally and certainly to the southern end of the Joliet Diocese. Very much thank Father Moises Mesh, a Viatorian priest from Belize who has been helping in the parishes I served and have offered reflections for both the English and Spanish speaking communities during this Lenten season. Uh, I received a message from one of my parishioners who's part of the uh, Via Praetorian Apostolate, and he was telling me the story about a priest named Father Antoine Macaire Christian Noah, who around February 8th, while driving his car, was abducted by an evil gang in Haiti, and who endured great torture for a month until he was able to escape captivity on March 3rd. The sufferings that so many priests in Central and South America have had to endure. I was thinking about Bishop Rolando Alvarez, who is a priest and a bishop in Nicaragua, whom Daniel Ortega and the government of that communist country sentenced to 26 years in prison for doing nothing more than being a Catholic priest. In Los Angeles, California, Auxiliary Bishop David O'Connell had brutally been murdered by one of his staff during this Lenten season for doing nothing more than living the Christian life. Essentially, in our society today, that has gotten way out of control. A lot of times, the dominant culture wants to impress themselves severely on everyone else to force you to believe what they believe. It's wrong no matter what. In this particular country where we live, we thought we lived in a country where we could choose. And there are sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. You can choose good, you can choose evil. That's part of being in America. You can do all kinds of things, but the dominant culture, no matter where they are, often oppress anyone that does not follow what they believe. And in today's age, because of all the things that have happened in Christianity, which sometimes is our own doing, and sometimes it's our fault. The society at large has decided to vilify, in many ways, the Catholic way of life. The idea of love thy neighbor and do unto others has been lost in a society that does not understand the difference between loving the sinner, but not the sin. To love every person as a sacred creature. Look, I used to hear confessions at Stateville Penitentiary. These were the worst convicts we had in the state of Illinois. I didn't have to agree with what they did. The state of Illinois still has a penalty for what they did. But if you come forward, no matter who you are, you say you're sorry, you want forgiveness, we are obligated to give it. That being said, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter what you believe, I am supposed to love you, even if you don't love me, even if you vilify me. I keep going back to the Gospel of Luke. And what Jesus said to those who nailed him to the cross, to us who nailed him to a cross, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. Jesus sets the example. He sets the example of people that did not agree with him and vilified him and subsequently killed him on a cross. And the faith is killed every day by all kinds of different people. It's wrong for us to oppress others with our beliefs, and it's wrong for others to do it to us. This is supposed to be an institution of love, 
This is supposed to be an institution of sacrifice and protection to know that we have priests and bishops, whether it be in Haiti, whether it be in Nicaragua, whether it be in Los Angeles, you know, the whole martyrology of the church of so many individuals who have given their lives for the sake of Christ, passively giving their lives, not fighting others about life, but giving their life, following example of our Lord Jesus Christ, who though in the form of God did not deem equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, bearing us in human likeness, suffering death, even death on a cross, so that his name, every knee will bend and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He was willing to die. He was willing to be placed in our hands. And that's like any relationship. You take a chance and you offer your love to someone else and you could be terribly hurt or great things can happen. I keep focusing on the good things, the good things that are happening in our border town communities because we love, because we welcome people. Even if they don't agree with us, we work together. We show people that we care. This is the theme of our psalm. This is the theme of our second reading. This is the theme of our gospel. Jesus is the fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies. Jesus is love. And love must be our primary objective. Caritas, agape, self-sacrifice, saying that your life is more important than my life. If we understand that, then we very much understand why these priests and deacons and bishops and religious and wonderful lay folk have put their lives on the line for the sake of love. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat, but if it dies, it produces much fruit. If we sacrifice for the sake of the other, instead of being for me, it's for someone else. Protecting the life of the womb, protecting the life of the vulnerable, protecting the life of the children walking on earth, protecting the life of those in our society who are discriminated and marginalized, protecting all those people who have no one else to be an advocate for them. If we can do that, then we understand why Jesus died on the cross. Because you're going to lose. I'm going to lose. God is going to lose. But in the end, because we lost, we won. We won because God has not abandoned us. And on the last day, if we act like Christ, wonderful things can happen. I just want to thank you for the last three years for staying with us, understanding what we're trying to do, telling you you're loved, it's not a big ministry. It's not one that is watched by a lot of people, but the people that do watch it are so important to us. You are important to us. You are loved by us in God's name. Please don't forget that. Please offer that same sacrifice to the homeless, to the dejected, to the unborn, to the children, to the suffering, to the marginalized, and to all people that we meet. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. He is the new Adam. He is the new Moses. He is the new Elijah. He is the new David. Confident that we reach heaven with God's help in our contrite hearts. Let us open our hearts to God as we offer our Lord our petitions. That those who are called to lead the church may serve with humility and love as opposed to power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives have suffered so unjustly because of the world, that their faith may be united with Christ's suffering on the cross, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the parishioners of St. Patrick's and St. Anne may never lose faith in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our benefactors, for those who have supported these parishes through good times and then through bad, that God may continue to bless them for their charitable hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they may feel God's presence in the hands of their caregivers, especially those on our parish's sick list, for all the individuals who have asked me to pray for them this Lenten season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be welcomed by God in his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions offered this last week, that they and their families may be embraced by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, as you model the life of suffering and humility, may we understand the glory that is revealed through your sacrificial signs. May we learn how to follow that example in what we do through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may already feel the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with the angels we praise you 
as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenisunt Celia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini. Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, ex graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave it to the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei, mortem tuam annunciamus domine, et tuam resurrectionem confitemur, donec venias. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. 
graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panam nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitibus, Debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, quitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, Quitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, quitolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. This has been a very holy and productive and spirit-filled Lent here at the Bordertown Parishes with an Irish dinner and the window project over at St. Patrick's Gym 
and with the sound system being installed at St. Anne's Church online, we have offered you educational reflections concerning what people gave up for Lent and concerning the covering of statues. We've tried to do whatever we could to uh, make this a very holy and faith-filled season, and hopefully you'll stay with us through this holiest of weeks. On Thursday, we will have our in-church services at St. Anne's at 5 o'clock p.m. and at St. Pat's at 7 p.m. The St. Pat's service will be bilingual. Following the Mass, I will hear confessions until all are heard and will have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament until that time. Good Friday. St. Anne's Church has decided to have a Stations of the Cross and Communion service at 3 o'clock p.m. for those who wish to attend. And over at St. Patrick's at 12 noon, we are going to simultaneously have a Stations of the Cross service that will begin as a community in English and Spanish. The Spanish community will venture outside, weather permitting, to walk the outdoor Stations of the Cross. And those good faithful souls uh, in the English-speaking community will stay indoors. We will then have a traditional Good Friday bilingual service at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Good Friday. On Holy Saturday morning, we will have our blessing of baskets at 10 o'clock a.m. over at St. Anne's and at 11 o'clock a.m. over at St. Patrick's. 16 individuals from our community will be receiving the sacraments at the Easter Vigil. Very much want you to pray for them. What a blessed group we have. And it's a wonder and honor that we have so many individuals coming forward seeking God's grace at this really holy time. Our Easter Vigil service at St. Patrick's will take place at 8 o'clock p.m. There will be no 4 o'clock Mass that day. And then on Easter Sunday, we have our regular Mass schedule at St. Anne's at 9 o'clock. St. Patrick's in English at 10.30, and St. Patrick's in Spanish at 12 o'clock noon. Whatever you need from us, whether it be house blessings, anointing of the sick, confessions, just give us a call. Continue to pray for Emma Elvier, our parish secretary, who on Ash Wednesday fell and broke both ankles, and she went in for successful surgery over at St. Mary's Hospital in Kankakee, and she is recovering and doing very, very well. Very much want to thank her daughter, Abby, Abigail, who has wonderfully filled in for Emma in the parish office, and Kathy Griffiths and Artemi Ojeda, Kim Emerson, our DRE at St. Anne's, and John Raymer over at St. Patrick's. We have been talking about just trying to get rid of parish debts and pew donations and book donations and brick donations. We're just doing what we can to keep afloat. The beautiful comment I hear is that both parishes are growing. That is a testimony to you and the faith that exists in these parishes. Keep up what you're doing. We are blessed to have you as part of our online community. You're always welcome to join us in church or feel free to contact us by phone, email, or however you want. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. This Mass has ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God.
So I am inside St. Patrick's Academy Gymnasium with our brand new windows and our beautiful floor and hopefully the Lori Simpson Memorial Basketball Backboard that she tells me she wrote her name on. It is an absolutely gorgeous facility and we are well on our way to upgrading this beautiful building for the people of Moments, Illinois. Welcome to St. Patrick's Gymnasium, which is in desperate need of renovations, bathrooms, a warming kitchen, and here comes the troublemaker. Hello, Gabby, how you doing? This is what you have to do in a gymnasium if you are a senior in order to use the bathroom facilities, which we need to improve drastically to help those of senior age and with special needs. 